kick off uh, our first keynote panel for the next 30 minutes. We will talk about uh, big data. Uh, we'll do that uh, uh, with uh, Alex Bloemendaal, the country manager uh, of the Netherlands for Traffics. And we do that with uh, Jens Weyers. Uh, he's the director of customer centric selling at vol.com. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, maybe you can give, I'm sure there's much more to tell and to talk about yourself than this title that I just mentioned. So if you can briefly introduce yourself, what exactly uh, you do at, uh, at Travix, Alex, and at Vol, uh, Jens, that would be uh, nice to, uh, to kick the session off. Thank you. Uh, to start with me, <laughs> if I may uh, <laughs> kick off. Um, Travix is a company that probably all of you know by our brands, but not by the company name Travix itself. It's uh, uh, the, uh, the company that has uh, cheap tickets to NL, Vliegwinkel.nl, Budget Air, uh, and uh, abroad companies like, of uh, brands like Flugladen, uh, Vayama. And what we sell is airline tickets. And um, we do this across the globe. Headquarters, I think, uh, 15 meters that way, the next building. So for me, it was uh, at home. And um, as a country manager responsible to, uh, to optimize sales, obviously, and for me, I try to do that based on data. Data is a passion. I used it before at other companies, and uh, uh, that's what I bring to the table here. Great, thank you very much. Jens? Um, well I think most of you probably know Bol.com. We are a big online retailer in the Netherlands and in Belgium as well. Um, well, mostly as I say, uh, if it fits in a box, we sell it and we send it. Um, as being responsible for customer-centric selling, um, we try to create the most relevant customer experience for our customers. We have millions of products, we have millions of customers, and by creating an own shop, a personal shop for our customers, we try to give the uh, customer a really relevant experience and an easy way to find what they need. That sounds great. Customer-centric selling uh, directly uh, brings me to uh, data. I'm sure there's data involved in order to, uh, to do that. So uh, Jens, maybe to start with you, can you give a description of what big data is for you and, and for bold.com and, and why, why this is so important? Um, of course. Um, to start with data, I think we used data for years already to create a personal or a relevant experience for our customers. But I think with the, the new techniques and the new innovations, we have more data available, we have more detailed data available. And I think also the, the speed of, of the data is brought to you. It's also increased very rapidly. And I think that enables us to take a next step in creating that relevant shop for our customers. And I think all that data combined, so the deep data, the detailed data, and the speed of the data, I think that's all what we call big data. And that's what we use at Bolt.com. Do you also have 90 uh, petabytes of data? <laughs> I'm not sure, but <laughs> it, it's a lot. <laughs> how do you see that, uh, uh, Alex? How do you, how do you define uh, big data and uh, uh, why is it so important? Well, on one hand, I fully agree with Jens. But on the other hand, I would simply state it's one of the buzzword bingo words of the moment. Because data is, in the end, less relevant than the goal it has, which is running optimal campaigns towards the customer, uh, being relevant to the customer. And um, when we use the word big data, a lot of alarms and red lights and red tape areas uh, pop up, like uh, complex, difficult, don't do that. But when we talk campaigns, uh, can we uh, email in time? Can we address uh, the customer with the right offering? Then suddenly everybody says, hey, welcome, let's start, let's do it. So f for me, it's one hand exactly what Jens is explaining, or the other hand is making it actionable, make it useful, usable in the customer journey, customer experience. So uh, thanks for that. So how, how do you make it actionable at uh, Travix? Um, we are running several programs, uh, 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 two areas. Let's, let's take the two most important areas. One is uh, uh, we will try to be best in flights meaning that we have the relevant offer for you against the relevant price. But you can imagine that prices change uh, uh, even on, on second or minute basis uh, when a airplane is fully booked or not. Or when one of our competitors somewhere in the world sells a, a ticket, uh, an airline might start yielding and raise prices. So one area is how do we 
optimize the right price in the back office and bring it to the front end to our customer in such a way that the price is relevant and, uh, and available. And uh, we use big data techniques to, uh, uh, to handle those. And the other one, which I think is as relevant as the back office, the best in flight, is uh, uh, the customer, customer area, which is our touch points like the website or mobile or our marketing touch points like uh, an email or uh, a banner campaign or a, uh, a Google ad. And we are setting up a system where we can reuse customer behavior data across these touch points to give you a seamless experience like you explained for, e for, uh, for eBay, but also in such a way that it is efficient for us and uh, that we are everywhere where we need to be and we're not where we don't want to be. That's great. Um, triggers a question, it's actually a personal question. So how do you optimize for price? Do I really need to be aware when I use my uh, Microsoft computer versus my Apple computer? Uh, because you maybe uh, no. adjust your pricing to that? No. We don't want to. We cannot do it. And uh, uh, it's also the boundaries of legal. But very simple, no. Uh, it's the back end. It's the uh, airline that sets the price yeah. and changes the price on a minute basis. And that's what we put back to the customer in the front end. So the answer is no. Okay. Do you adapt prices to, uh, no, uh, to devices or uh, uh, where somebody is in the customer <coughs> journey? No, I agree, uh, I agree on that. Uh, we change a lot in our shop, uh, except for really one thing, that's price. Price is always the same for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you talked about the, the customer journey, a seamless experience. That's where, where you use data for uh, at, uh, at Travix. Um, can you make that a little bit more concrete with, a, with, a, uh, with an example or a case? How you do that? Um, yes, um, I'm giving a bit of a future example because we're rolling it out this month. Uh, but we're setting up this data layer. And uh, for example, I set a banner uh, uh, somewhere on the web, like a, uh, uh, for example, sake, uh, Easter banner, Easter campaign. And this banner is uh, uh, bought real time on an RTB platform and shown to customers, which uh, the system thinks are rele relevant customers. Um, whether you looked at it, clicked on it or not, we re reuse that experience, that uh, behavior in, for example, AdWords. If you clicked on the banner, we're going to raise the bid in Google AdWords. If you did not click on the banner, we're not going to raise on AdWords. If you clicked on the banner on mobile, we're going to raise the banner, uh, the ad on uh, uh, Google mobile and so forth and so forth so that we optimize this spend and presence. And then when you arrive on the website, we know what you have touched. And one of our uh, uh, elements on our uh, development backlog is that based on this click data, based on the view data, based on the behavior in AdWords, we can show you either this relevant product or maybe something else. Again, the keyword is what Jens already used, is relevancy in this case. Uh, um, if you don't click, why do we should we show the banner again? It's obviously not relevant here. So it, it's it's type of campaign integration across all marketing channels that we have onto the website, integrating everything uh, into one experience. I think it's a, I think it's a great example. I'm, I'm I will look forward to talk to you again after you have rolled it out. Uh, one of the words in the theme of this uh, of this session is uh, without making the customer feel uncomfortable. I think you, you touched already on, on the main item. Uh, you can't feel somebody making uncomfortable to the extent that you are still relevant. The moment it doesn't get relevant or it gets uh, repetitive, irritant, then uh, I think you have a problem. So I how, agree. Do you make, how, how do you make sure that the consumer stays to feel comfortable with, with you? Yeah, adapting uh, to his uh, journey. It's a difficult question. I, I, I fully agree with your statement. And with this new platform, we try to be as relevant as possible across all touch points. But there are certain touch points which you cannot control or maybe don't want to control based on a cost basis, such as uh, uh, Criteo. I assume most of you are aware of the company called Criteo. They do retargeting, uh, abandoned basket retargeting. Those banners are ugly and they keep nagging you and nagging you and nagging you. But yeah. there is a business case behind it that makes money. Nobody uh, from Criteo here? If, if so, sorry, step to your <laughs> toes, sorry. 
No. Uh, uh, this for me is an example where we are looking for the, uh, uh, the, the red uh, green area uh, uh, where we want to go or not. And if I'm able with this new platform, I should say when I'm able with this new platform to move from Criteo into these controlled campaigns, then it for me becomes yep. for me relevant and for the customer more relevant. I, th I think I, I can't agree more uh, with you. How is that at, at, uh, at Ball? How do you try to uh, be relevant in this customer journey based on using big data? Well, I think I agree with Alex. I think he said um, um, that it's, it's, it's how do you create a relevance for your customers and but it's not always possible. Um, of course, we do the, the, the stuff like um, um, building good recommendations, uh, uh, improve your search, add trending topics to your search so your customer can more easily uh, find what he needs. And also, not look only at what the customer uses in your shop, but also look at what the customer doesn't use in your shop. Um, but we're also experimenting on taking a, next, a next step on that and also offer the customer the opportunity to click away what he doesn't want to see in the shop. Because th it, you see that the customer ignores things, but you can also give the customer the tool to actually change the shop in the way he wants it. And I think in that way we can add more uh, relevancy to the customer, but also give him more control of creating more relevancy for himself in his shop. Um, it's an, it, it's an experiment now, but I believe there's more in this um, uh, to, to actually give the, the customer the control of the shop um, and also uh, um, give, him, give him a tool to, 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 to well, you can see what he likes because he clicks on it, but you can also give him a tool to, to, to take away what he doesn't like. Great. And use the word control. Maybe you guys think that we are much, way too much in control because we all agree. So maybe that's uh, also a nice opportunity to see if there are any other, any other questions uh, on your mind that you'd like to ask to uh, Alex or Jens. Oh, yeah, ladies first. It's about a, it's a business model question. It's a very uh, valid question. Um, uh, there's one detail which is different in the question than uh, practical is that Google is not selling flights. Go Google Flight Finder, I think that's what you're referring to, is uh, it's like a meta search engine comparing all flights uh, across all vendors and is therefore a direct competitor for companies called Kayak or Skyscanner. They still need ticketing and ticketing is the uh, 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 the ticket itself, the flight ticket, giving it to a customer. And that's something we can do. So um, they need companies like ours to sell flights. That's the positive side. Uh, the, other kind, uh, the other kind of the metal uh, is that um, they become uh, uh, more experienced and more enhanced and for us more expensive in uh, offering this flight to a customer. And um, our trick is to become uh, 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 to uh, to use our strong brands and become more relevant to have our market position in place. Uh, and, and yes, there is a big risk of leaking sales to these meta engines, and, and that they will start selling. Fortunately, until now, we are able to uh, keep our sales uh, uh, strong, and uh, therefore, is not a big issue at the moment. Great. Is there another question? Uh, question for Alex. Um, um, you're, you're trying to create a 360 customer profile in your system. Uh, did you already decide yes. what campaign management system you're going to use for it? Is it one system? Did you build it yourself or buying something from Google, DoubleClick, for example? You gave the, uh, the magic answer. We're going to use DoubleClick. Okay. And, uh, uh, but DoubleClick itself is not the only tool. You need to feed DoubleClick with the right feeds. So the uh, uh, data from our back office with the uh, flight data, we're going to feed that into DoubleClick. Customer profiles, we're going to feed that into DoubleClick. Uh, uh, orders, uh, we're going to feed them into DoubleClick because DoubleClick itself is just a platform. The way yeah. you implement it is the, uh, the holy grail. Definitely. Um, uh, how do you implement uh, the various local systems you have? 
Um, for example, um, uh, we as an online retailer, uh, we are using uh, Kieskeurig, which is typically Dutch and doesn't easily connect with double click. So how are you going to handle that? Because you're an international company, 18 countries, I think. Yeah. Well, the setup is in such a way that we can roll out per country. Um, and uh, yes, we're starting with Ireland and the Netherlands. Uh, those are the two uh, guinea pig countries where we build up this system. And with uh, uh, partners like Kieskeurig, if we would have had them, um, um, we know and understand that we cannot control them using this platform. We, we can use the click trackers in the system to build up a data, uh, data around the behavior of Kies, uh, uh, our customers using Kieskeurig. And with that, we can attribute it right. And we can see the real value instead of the value that Kieskeurig says it has to you. And based on these uh, uh, insights, it's big data reporting almost, uh, big data insights that gives us the uh, tool to go back to Kieskeurig and says we're going to push this campaign or we're going to stop that campaign. Well, without this platf platform, um, we would just have continued. And you're also using Google Analytics for the attribution modeling? Um, partly, we're going to use the attribution modeling within DoubleClick itself, because we think that's a stronger one. So you're not going to be using the new dynamic model in Google? It will be available in DoubleClick, they say. So that question about uh, sorry, so one other question, question? Uh, discussion about Cuteo. We also have the discussion, ugly balance, but they work. Um, question to you is, why do they work? Do they work because Cuteo is very smart in finding people, or is the banner just very good, but ugly? I don't know. If it's, if I don't know. If the it's only the only banner, you have to use a new technology. The banners are ugly, and when we created pretty branded banners, we saw the click-through rates uh, cut in half, and we saw sales dropping and prices increases. So Similar with us. Um, they just have an optimized ugly system, and it, it, it really works. And um, my gut feeling says it works because it's the volume, the, the eyeballs. It's a lot of eyeballs. It's keep nagging you, and then there is a, a part of the consumer base that does click. But do I'm not sure. Do you optimize on, on sales data or on click data? Both. I see here a nice matchup later on at the drinks <laughs> to continue the discussion. Um, it's always uh, <coughs> funny to see that uh, two companies almost always come up in these kind of discussions, Criteo, Criteo and, uh, and Google. Um, I found a, lo uh, a nice anecdote about, about Google, and I think one of the reasons why they're so good at data is because they live data, they breathe data, it's in their culture. They even have, uh, they even have uh, optimized the waiting time in their cafeteria uh, to uh, maximize uh, uh, the, rel the relationship building uh, between uh, uh, employees. So they even analyze the waiting time uh, in the cafeteria to make best use of that in order to get uh, to know each other. So uh, how, is, how is that uh, in your companies? Uh, for example, uh, at Bol, um, yeah, you have data. I think it's, it's a challenge to get the data out of the systems, but you need to have some organizational setup to do that. Uh, how is the culture around data at Bol? Um, I think to start to say it's it's bold.com is is it's breeds uh, Scrum methodology. <coughs> I think we believe in in being an agile organization, and I think one of the biggest advantages of having an agile organization is that IT and the the the, the commerce are very closely organized. Um, practically, they just work in multidiscipline teams together. And by that setup, um, it's very easy for us to, 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 to look at the data, to use the data, and to experiment in our shop uh, with experiments to create more relevancy. Um, it, it's a continuous process. So it's small experiments, and if the experiment works, uh, we scale it up and implement it. And that goes quite fast. Uh, you can test something in, in six or eight weeks, and you can implement it in a few months. Um, yeah. Talking about data, and we briefly discussed uh, the, the definition. I, I think, uh, and if you haven't seen it, I would suggest, uh, uh, recommend to look it up. Uh, definition by, uh, uh, by Gartner, who defines data around uh, uh, variety, velocity, and volume. Um, where I find velocity a very intriguing one. Velocity is about that, uh, uh, it's about real, it's not only about real time uh, data, but it's also about the changing relationship and context of certain data. 
So, um, for example, that ball, uh, how do you deal with that? I mean, that seems to be quite a challenge. I, th I think that is one of the biggest challenges for us for the coming years. Um, um, I think we made a lot of big steps on, on analyzing the data we have now, uh, but batch analytics. Um, I think we know quite well what you did uh, in our shop the, the last few months. Uh, um, I, I think the biggest challenge for now is acting real time. Uh, we created more relevan relevancy in our shop by um, knowing who you are and what you ordered at ball.com. And I think the next step is, is adding real time to that. So respond on what you do in our shop now. And it's, uh, I give you an example of that. Um, um, one of the steps we made now is that we give you a recommendation on the product you last viewed in our shop. Um, but the next step is, for example, if you come to our shop, you watch 10, 10 televisions, I don't only want to give you an inspiration on the last television you viewed, but I want to know what is the common thing with those 10 televisions. Is it brand? Is it price? Is it uh, technology? Is it size? And I want to inspire you on the basis of those common things. I think that is one of the biggest challenges we see now. So when do you think uh, you are there? Um, I, I don't, it's, it's hard to predict that. Um, no, we, we want to make the steps uh, this year, next year. Yeah. Next year. That, you note it down. Next year we have a panel on how this evolves and uh, how the, the, the whole setup of rolling out this uh, customer journey around banners uh, works out. So any other questions uh, for uh, Alex or Jens that we might uh, have not touch on? Uh, in the back. Oh, maybe wait one second because it's hard to hear you over here. Uh, do one of you have any examples on how you use big data to increase customer loyalty other than uh, use big data to uh, increase repeat selling? Okay, nice uh, bridge to one of the other themes. How do you use big data to increase loyalty? I've used it in the past to analyze churn ratios and the cause of churn ratios and email. And... Um, set up a campaign how to uh, revive them and bring them back uh, uh, as a loyal customer. But it's not really a customer loyalty program. It's more like trying to learn uh, the customer as good as it gets. Within um, the customer loyalty program, sorry, I cannot answer your question. Well, I think we use it uh, for, the, for the common things like um, doing follow-up campaigns on things you bought in the past. Um, to, um, to try to, um, to to respond on the things you put on your list, try to respond on the things that you viewed in the past. Um, but what I believe is that um, um, if we're able to create a, a very relevant and your own shop, I think through that relevancy, we're actually also creating loyalty. And I think that that's a very uh, important goal uh, where we use the big data for. Any other? But I like the, the link to the other themes, and uh, uh, there's one that pops up in my mind uh, as you ask that question. Uh, it's a link with, uh, with Omnichannel. Um, at eBay and especially also at Marktplatz, uh, it's a challenge, and we're working on it to really uh, uniquely identify somebody when he uh, moves across devices and across platforms. Uh, because the big challenge today is that all these platforms, uh, whether it's iOS or Android, etc., they all have their own unique identifier, and so have the devices. So to form a unique uh, identifier on which you can uh, build uh, data around, I think that's a, that's a challenge. Uh, and if we crack that one, it's a, it's a, it's a great challenge. So how, how, how is that going at your companies? Um. Well, I think you're touching on another very big challenge. Um, I think we are not that far as we want to be. Um, we're able to, to, to see uh, what the customer does on the different channels, uh, but to actually create the 360 view on the one customer and all the channels that it uses, all the devices that it uses, and I think that's another big challenge for us. Do, do you need to be locked in at Ball? I think so, huh? in the end. Yes, yeah. So uh, if you have a certain uh, percentage, I don't know how much that is, that is logged in, that uh, can be quite an advantage. Uh, to hang up this unique identifier. 
I agree with that. Um, I think that once the customer is logged in, um, you're, we are able to actually uh, connect the customers with each other. I think the bigger challenge, of course, is for the customers who aren't logged in. Um, yeah. And that's, that's a big one. Yeah. This is also a big one. That's for us the biggest one. But why should you log in if you only book a ticket every one or two years? Yeah. And I can imagine with uh, with Ball that you log on uh, uh, because you're there every three, four, five, six weeks. That's a different ball game. Yeah. So using the login mechanism is uh, preferred, but I don't think it's realistic. Yeah. So we bet, we count on uh, the industry could to come up with uh, uh, certain uh, techniques. And uh, one is uh, 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 Google Universal Tagging. They're working on it. Is it ready? No. Does it work? Not yet. Uh, another one is Facebook coming up with uh, uh, systems. Is it working? No. Is it potential? Yes. Um, we're, we're, we're too small to develop it ourselves. So it's uh, unfortunately not in control. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, uh, to wrap this up, maybe uh, one or two practical questions, unless there are any other questions from the audience. Yeah. Oh, actually a few. Again, ladies first. Uh, hi, I'm Denise. Uh, question to Jens. Um, how many customer journeys have you defined in which you uh, adapt your online uh, e-commerce? Um, that's a good question. Um, actually, <laughs> to, to be honest, we have millions of customer journeys because I believe that every customer has his own journey. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't give you an exact number. Um, but I think that's that's what we believe. And of course, we uh, we understand there are different phases in the customer journey. Um, that's the, the classical phases, and we try to 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 guide the customer in the best way through those phases. But in the end, I think every customer has his own customer journey. So another hand over there in that corner. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Felix. Um, my question is about the login uh, systems. Um, couldn't you make use of um, the Google Chrome login? For example, when I'm connected on my laptop and then uh, I go somewhere by train, I'm connected on my mobile device, it knows my uh, browse history and yeah, my YouTube history, so couldn't you make use of that? I think uh, Google is using it actively as part of the uh, universal tagging uh, solution. So uh, we don't have to use it. As long as we use the universal tagging of Google, then we have a unique profile and are able to, uh, to follow the profile. If you want to log in, then obviously we can reuse that login as well. But uh, it's part of the trick that Google is using. And unfortunately for this trick, everybody should use Google, uh, Google Chrome to be uh, really successful. And uh, we all know it's not at the moment. This is uh, almost coming to an end. I think we can easily discuss the, the rest of the day on big data, and we probably do in the breaks and at the drinks. Uh, but maybe some last question uh, to you guys. Uh, some, what is the main obstacle that you run into uh, your organization, and what is the, the one piece of advice that you want to give us uh, to get uh, to crack this big data case and get started? Uh, Jens, you want to? I think I think the, the best advice I can give. Uh, when starting using <coughs> big data in your company, is just start small. <laughs> it's, uh, but that's, I think, is the best way. Uh, uh, try to, to set up a small experiment uh, um, and try to see if you can use the data uh, to actually create relevancy. And it's not only about, are the right people involved? Or am, am I using the right systems? Uh, uh, is this the best way to use the data? But it's also a very good way to, to show uh, um, the importance uh, of using big data. Thank you. Alex? I would add to start small, start now. There's no reason to wait. If you start small, there's always some budget somewhere, or some capacity somewhere, and uh, just do it. And uh, I found the best uh, uh, projects we've just started on the, on the back of an envelope somewhere on a Friday afternoon without uh, um, approval from board, but we just did it. And uh, there's no reason to wait, really no reason to wait. Just do it now. I think that's, that's uh, hitting the nail mm. on the head. Uh, start small. It sounds funny in the context of big data. 
Uh, but we are all aware that we have a lot of data, uh, but if we don't use it, it is called dark data. And at least if we can grab a piece of that and start using it and see internal successes, it's also a way to build culture and enthusiasm around it and start cracking uh, this case. I want to thank you very much, Alex and Jens. Um, again, if you have any questions, I'm sure we are all around to continue the discussion. Thanks. <laughs>